Uh, yes, I'm uh, speaking on behalf of Lynn Hudson and myself. We consolidate our things to fit within the four minutes. Uh, our discussion, our uh, session was on standards and governance, which um, frankly was a lot more exciting than I expected. Uh, it was a, a lot of a lively debate. Um, following up from what uh, Michael said, I, I, so one of my favorite sayings is disclosure does not equal transparency. And I think that was one of the underpinnings of that session. You can put data out in the public domain, but if you don't, you can't explain what it means or for how, how to use it. It actually isn't being transparent. Uh, and I think the two, there were some themes and, and some uh, debates and disagreements, and I think you could sort of put them into two buckets around whether you're thinking about looking forward or on prospective policy or looking retrospectively, and the, the answers might be quite different. I think even the most um, um, uh, conservative people among our panel and speakers agree that going forward, standardizing prospectively and particularly clinical trials just makes all the sense in the world. Um, we heard from the uh, FDA Office of Planning Analysis that for submissions, um, even if it's done retrospectively, having things in a standardized way is really the only way they can survive in looking at a submission environment. Um, if you're looking at retrospective standardization of other data sets, you could decide that maybe that's an investment decision. You, maybe you don't want to standardize all the data. Maybe you only want to look at those variables that are important or, or that are being requested, or if it's a, a discovery data set. Um, in terms of warehousing, I think to our uh, two speakers from the FDA, uh, Seifert and Pistrakis, um, basically, um, I think were discouraged by efforts around warehousing. And so basically, that was saying they're basically saying um, so Re-standardizing things uh, retrospective may not be the way to go. Meredith Nam, I think, did a great job pointing out to us the importance of defining terminology and semantics. So if you, even if you're going to put data out in the public domain, if there isn't a common understanding of what the words mean, whether you like dictionaries or, or whatever or not, that's, it's a reality. Quality was an interesting debate. I think, <clears throat> again, everybody agree, in, in, it's been proven in many industries or environments, standardizing things going forward improves quality. I mean, everybody, would, almost in any process. The debate was whether or not standardizing retrospective data, uh, you certainly can't, you can't make good, bad data good by standardizing it. You just make it standardly bad. <laughs> um, um, there was some comments that standardizing data actually can hurt the quality of data. I don't personally believe that. I disagree with that speaker, but um, yeah, that was a minority view. The question of who pays, which we never answered, but came up a number of times. and. Uh, I've now learned not to use the word data owner. Um, the data <laughs> holder or um, uh, generator isn't necessarily the one who should be saddled with the cost all the time. They, they may not have the, ma the means to do that. So who, who, that problem needs to be solved. The, who, who's, if you're going to request data, who's going to pay to get it in a way, in a form that people can look at it? And following on from that, we heard from both the HL7 and, and the CDISC environment that the vast majority of standards development in, in the world is done on a volunteer basis. And that's not really a sustainable model. I mean, going forward um, to rely on volunteers in, in the way uh, business is conducted is probably not a sustainable way if you really want to take the standards environment seriously. So somehow, the public, uh, in quotes, uh, needs to, to think about funding that. Um, we had several of the speakers and uh, uh, comments from the audience um, pointing out that the uh, academic standards model needs to, to evolve to enable support and data sharing. Well, there are, there are mechanisms within industry and NIH to do that. There really doesn't exist that model in academia. And last but not least, I think a, a comment that came up several times is um, it's a great start to put some data out there, but unless we have a governance structure to say that actually all the data are out there, we we're, we're, have run the risk of potentially recreating. Uh, so if you don't have all the trials or you only have part of the treatment arms from certain trials, um, again, that's disclosure but not necessarily transparency. So it's not necessarily a standards issue, but it, but it is part of the general picture. <laughs>